Morning, Trainiacs. We are now, uh, I have no idea what day it is this day. Tuesday, we are five days out from the Half Ironman World Championships, at least my race, the women are one day earlier. And uh, I wanna say the taper is like officially starting. However, this is a fairly normal swim. How's that work? <laughs> So, five days out, essentially after what is my weekend of training. So today is like my Monday training day, i.e. easy swim. And floaty pants. And I should mention that Colin, the owner of Profiles Health Club here, just came by and told me to let all of you know that for the week, all Ironman athletes can come to Profiles and work out for free. They got nice treadmills, they got a 25 meter pool, they got me walking around in a Speedo. How's that for facilities? lovely day and this is a bit of a back to the future sort of timeline here Trainiacs because it's evening and I've been driving around all day we'll get to that in a minute for now I think I've got a good enough handle on the race course to make some intelligent little pieces of advice for anyone racing this week or anyone interested. So here we've got the swim course, but before we get into the swim course, which is what everyone I'm sure is worried about, rest assured that it is the least of your problems in this case. Weather is going to be the biggest issue that determines whether this is going to be a really easy day because it's actually a fairly manageable course out there or a really tough day come Saturday for the women, Sunday for the men. Now, if it is an east wind, that wind is gonna bring in a bunch of swell, a bunch of current, and a bunch of cold water to the swim. If it's a west wind, that's gonna be fairly sheltered. It's gonna be sheltered by the town, it's gonna be sheltered by a lot of the, the hills and the terrain that goes up from the west, and it's gonna make it a lot more manageable. What I want you to do is start looking at Wind Guru online. That's gonna give you the wind direction and the wind speed. Now to deal with that, if you have yet still to pack or you've got options, I would recommend going with a deeper section aero wheel, something like an 80 mil wheel, a 60 mil wheel, as opposed to a disc wheel. Now I might still go with a disc wheel if it gets past about 30, 35 kilometers an hour, we're talking about 20 miles an hour, I might not go with that disc wheel. Around there, I probably will. But if you have a choice and you have both of those options, the 80 mil front and back wheel, you're probably going to be a lot more steady and almost just as aerodynamic because the wind's gonna swirl around no matter where it's from. And a disc is going to help you and hurt you. So having that non-disc wheel that's still quite a bit deeper, I think is the nice sweet spot. And as far as dress, if it's under 15 degrees Celsius, and we're talking about 59 degrees Fahrenheit, I want you to do a few things. Number one, put on arm warmers that are under your wetsuit and put toe caps over your triathlon shoes that are clipped into the bike already in transition one. Then when you get into transition one, come off the bike and your hands are a little bit cold and they can only get colder when you go out onto the bike, put on a pair of windproof gloves. What you don't want is to have your hands just sitting out there in the wind stiffening up because that's likely going to make it harder on you to take on nutrition and then that leads to just disasters towards the end of the bike and the entire run. So you wanna make sure that you've got still nice nimble hands. That's how you deal with the weather. Let's get into the swim though. Now because it's going to be likely fairly choppy and a little bit cold at very least, if you aren't going to get in the water, I don't yet know if they're going to allow us in the water, I want you to go down to the water's edge and 
go off to the side so that you don't feel like you're breaking any rules, but just get out of everyone's way, splash some water on your face, put it in your swim cap, dump it over your head, put a little bit down your chest so that when you get into the water, it's not going to be that shocking. And then what I want you to do is if there is surf and there are waves coming in, the way that you deal with that is as a wave is coming in, basically just before you're about to hit it, dive under and get under that wave and just kind of torpedo until you feel it go over top of your head. Keep doing that as the surf comes over you until you get to the point that it's just swells and then swim away. Now, as you are going out, on the first bit of this course, the sun is likely going to be coming, I want to say, from around there. It's not perfectly east, so I don't think we're going to be going directly into the sun. So you can sight to your left. Keep the buoys on your left and keep an eye on those. As we go across that way on the 300 meter at the end, you're going to be able to sight either way. You might have to sight a little bit towards your left to keep the waves from crashing into your face on the right, but you should have the choice of either way. As you're coming back into shore, again, the sun is probably going to be in that general direction, so you want to sight to your right and keep those buoys on your left, and you're going to have to sight dead straight because you're not going to have the buoys on your left this time to keep an eye on them. A bike, it's actually a fairly easy bike. If it's an east wind, you're going to be helped on the way out and you're going to be working on the way back. But that back section down here, even though it doesn't really look like it curves a lot, if you look at it, that is basically one giant horseshoe. So what we ideally want is a west wind and that west wind coming this way is going to be sheltered by all the mountains over here so it's not really going to be helping us much at all but because this is a lot more exposed on the coming back section we'll get a fair bit of help if it is an east wind even though it's going to have hurt us in the swim that east wind is going to push us basically the entire way out and then here, because it's a horseshoe, it's not going to be hurting us the entire time. So we're not like, we're not going to be battling wind as much as you might think. What you might battle, however, that you've got to be a little bit careful of is as we are coming down the hill here at the turnaround, this spot right on the corner is extremely exposed and you get a huge gust of wind coming in from the sea. And at that point, you're coming off of a hill and you're gonna be coming off the hill at high speed, hitting a windbreak, so make sure that you've got a really good handle on those handlebars. As far as hills go, the only real hill that you have to worry about is coming right out of transition. You're taking a right on tr transition, and then right as you go up onto the course there, there's a fairly large hill, and at that point, it's significant enough that you can come up out of the arrow position and because it's so early in the bike, I want you to take it really easy. Let your power go a little bit over your target power, but don't start hammering because you could ruin your legs right then and there. Otherwise, the bike hills are fairly insignificant. So you can basically just tackle them how we would tackle normal hills. Say in my case, I'm going for a target power of 225 on hills. I might let that get up to around 260. On downhills, I might let that go down to around 170. But that's a fairly normal range, nothing very serious to worry about. The one thing that you are gonna have to deal with is road conditions. Road conditions aren't as bad as they might have seemed in some of the rides that you did if you were preparing for this, going out on the course this week because we're gonna be on one side of the road that has been resurfaced, but it is a little bit rough and there's three things that you should do about that. Number one, drop your tire pressure by about five PSI. That's gonna keep you from bouncing really high off of inconsistent road. Number two, if you've trained for it, have a little bit lower cadence so you can keep chain tension on and you're not losing power when you do bounce off that road. It's gonna help you stick to the ground and keep that 
chain tension kind of grinding along, but like I say, only if you've trained for it. And number three, this is a fair bit more sophisticated, it'll cost you a little bit more money, and if you can do this on your bike, go with a little bit wider tire. I might be switching from a 24 to a 26. That wider tire is going to basically make up for the speed loss that you'll have from going with a lower PSI because the rolling resistance is actually a lot better on a wider tire. So you can make those changes. The run, this is where you get fast. So the run is two loops. You're going to come out of transition, turn right, run up a hill, run back down to the end, run up a less steep hill, run back, and you're gonna repeat that two times. It's a fairly fast course, but there's a way that I think that you should approach it. Basically where you're gonna gain all your time is in this middle chunk right here. It's largely flat, some parts of it are downhill. This is where you're gonna gain your speed. The ends are where you can make or break your race because on this end over here, we have a really significant hill. On this end over here, it's such a small hill that you probably don't even know that you're going on it. So here's how you deal with it. Coming out of transition, I want you to, let's say, I'm gonna go for my 425 per K average pace over the course of the race. That's what I ideally wanna hit. As I come out of transition here, I'm gonna let my legs loosen up a little bit, not start smashing them just yet, and I'm gonna go at that 425, maybe just a little bit faster. This hill is going to be potentially crushing if I start trying to hammer up that. So I'm gonna go at that knowing that I'm probably gonna climb up to 445 maybe per kilometer, but that's okay because right away, I'm gonna start gaining time. As soon as I turn around here and all the way to the end, because I'm going downhill here, I'm going flat, and that's basically my time to let her rip. So I'm gonna to try to go from my 425 average kilometer down to maybe a 410, somewhere around there. At this point, that little turnaround is a false flat. It doesn't look like it when you're on it, but it's actually a fair bit uphill, and what you're gonna lose is about 10 seconds per kilometer. So when I get there, I'm gonna go somewhere around 425 to 430. And then basically, you are going to repeat that strategy for the rest of the race. As you start turning around the other way, you can bring it down. I'm gonna to try to bring it down again to around 410. I'm gonna let myself lose a bit of time on that hill there, and then as I turn around, we're gonna see how much I've got left in the legs, and hopefully I've got enough so that I average 425 per kilometer. Then you run into the finish, celebrate with all your friends, have an amazing time, and go for a frozen yogurt right here. I'll see you there. So here you go, Trainiacs. That is the Half Ironman 70.3 World Championship course for 2018. Hopefully this has helped some of you watching who are actually gonna be doing the race. And uh, we had an excellent day. On Mel's bucket list in life is just one point, elephants. So we went and saw some elephants and some zebras and some warthogs and pumbas and some kunus, check it out. If I don't see it, like if you're not into animals, hit that subscribe button below. And if you are already subscribed, you, to me, are like an elephant to Mel. Just awesome. Enjoy. Where is everyone coming from? I'm so scared right now. Actually. <laughs> Can I hug him? Will I get in trouble if I get out and I hug him? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, he's coming this way. He loves me. 
don't know why I like zebras so much. They're so unique. Did you know they are black with white stripes? Not white with oh, yeah, black that's stripes. Been a debate, hey? It's not a debate, it's fact. Have you never seen the Lion King? No. Fill me in. Well, where the light touches is ours. The dark spots, that's where Scar lives. Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Who's happy? Mm -hmm. Oh, elephants. Well, I saw that there was another. I didn't realize how small. because that's a mom thing. Who's your favorite, Mel? Who's my favorite? Who is your favorite? Um, the elephant. The elephant? Which one? A da baby or the big one at the end. Oh. Or I, the big one like, in the field. I think there's a tie with me for the elephant with the tusks and all the zebras. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of warthogs now. Oh yeah, warthogs too, they're pretty good. If you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below, and if you are subscribed, you are to us, like a uh, baby elephant is to Mel. Ah, baby elephants and warthogs. <laughs> <laughs>